Hello and welcome to my next tutorial about Prepomex. This time I will show you how to import pressure from CFD analysis performed using CFD OF add-on workbench in FreeCAD that utilizes OpenFoam as a solver. I will also show you how to prepare a simple CFD analysis in that environment so the video might take some time. Alright, uh, so now let's switch to FreeCAD uh, and the first thing uh, that I'm going to show you is uh, how to uh, install the CFD OF add-on workbench. Uh, if you want to, because it normally it's not provided with the default um, installation of FreeCAD, so it's add-on workbench, so you have to add, install it manually. And you can find it using add-on manager, and there uh, in workbenches tab you can find all the wor additional workbenches, and this one is uh, CFDOF that we are going to use. And of course if you don't have it installed, you can press install, and uh, then if also if it needs some updates after some time, um, then you can also update it from here. And uh, so there's also a button that allows you to check for updates of all the inst installed workbenches that you have. So mm, once you install this workbench, and you have to restart FreeCAD and you can then go to uh, Preferences. And there you can find a separate tab for this workbench and you need to install additional uh, dependencies. So there is some additional software that needs to be installed, uh, mainly OpenFOAM of course. Uh, so you can just press install OpenFOAM. Uh, then you can also install Paraview unless you just have it. Uh, then you can uh, select the um, executable here. And uh, then you also need Gmesh, this one is also provided with uh, default FreeCAD package, so you can just select the path. Uh, and then uh, you also need to set the path for OpenFOAM, uh, and then you need to select the directory to, to which the files will be uh, written. Mm, then there are those two dependencies that are used to uh, generate, th this one is used to generate the mesh, uh, apart from, from default meshers, uh, and this one is also available for some types of, of simulations. Uh, so once you install those dependencies and um, set the directories, you can run the dependency check to make sure that everything is ready uh, and then you can use uh, CFDOF, uh, it should work properly. Uh, and just remember to, to update it once there are some updates, uh, they fix many bugs and add new functionality, so uh, don't, don't forget about uh, updating it uh, once the, the update is available. Alright, so mm, once you have everything installed, let's uh, proceed to mm, defining the model. Uh, so I will show you how to mm, prepare an analysis, uh, CFD analysis uh, on a plate uh, subjected to mm, laminar flow steady state. Uh, so let me mm, start with the geometry first. Uh, I will use the cube tool uh, to create uh, a cube in, in the part uh, workbench of FreeCAD uh, and now I can set uh, the placement and size of the cube here. Uh, so mm, let's expand the position and uh, also uh, size of the cube. So first of all I will specify mm, the position of the cube uh, then uh, I will also set uh, the, the uh, length, uh, so this will be 400 millimeters, and then 100 millimeters for and width, and uh, 250 for uh, height. So then uh, I have my uh, geometry prepared. Uh, uh, this will be half of the geometry so, since I will utilize symmetry, so uh, that's uh, how it looks like. Mm, then another cube, and uh, this one mm, will also need uh, position and uh, size specification. So uh, for uh, position I'll use 100 here, 100 here, and 0 there. Uh, now for mm, size uh, I set uh, 5, uh, 20, and 150. And that's my uh, geometry that will be used for, for CFD simulation. But uh, before I'm proceeding to CFDOF, I just have to do one more thing. I need to select those two geometries, and from the list of, of, of the tools here, I have to select my compound. And now I have a compound of those two mm, shapes that's ready to use with uh, CFDOF uh, workbench. Uh, Alright, so uh, let's proceed to uh, CFDOF, uh, and uh, I will show you how to prepare the CFD analysis. Then, of course, we will import the results to mm, PureMax. Uh, Alright, so mm, let's create a new analysis container and uh, I have some default settings here. You can see that uh, the analysis by default is steady, single phase, incompressible vicious and laminar. I will leave those uh, settings uh, default values. And then I can select the air, the, the fluid and I will use the default selection of air uh, with those uh, properties so I won't go, I'm not going to change this. Uh, and then I also have some mm, initial uh, settings, I can uh, initial values uh, or initial conditions actually, so I can just uh, set this to specify values, uh, zeros everywhere and confirm this. Alright, now mm, what I need to do, you can see the geometry now with some transparency uh, and now of course I need to uh, create the mesh and then add some boundary conditions and uh, run the analysis. So the first thing to do is to apply uh, mesh, uh, so the CFD mesh tool is going to help with that. And now I can select the type of the mesh, so I will choose snappy hex mesh. Uh, this one is very common when it comes to open foam, but there are also other, other options available. So the, one of those dependencies will CF mesh, and you can also use G mesh if you want, but uh, for those two types, tetrahedral or polyhedral uh, meshes. 
So we'll lose a snappy hex mesh to generate hexahedral mesh. Uh, I need to specify the size of the mesh, uh, so this will be uh, six millimeters in this case. Uh, and then uh, I need to specify the location of a point uh, somewhere in, in the fluid domain. Uh, basically, that's what I need to do. Mm, and I could, uh, to locate this point, I could, for example, create a uh, point in the parkour bench uh, as a type of primitive. Uh, set the uh, set the coordinates and then uh, make sure that this point lies within the uh, fluid domain. But I already have the coordinates, so mm, I'm just going to uh, input them here. And those are the coordinates that will be used for mesh generation. All right. Mm, so now I will leave the, the remaining settings with default values. Uh, I can write a mesh case, but uh, before I'm going to do this, I will also uh, create uh, local mm, refinement because this is also possible and often uh, necessary. So mm, I will choose this uh, mesh refinement option here. I will set to volume refinement mm, and now uh, I will select the uh, cube from here. Uh, so mm, I'm going to select this one and this will be uh, the volume used for, for the mesh refinement. Of course the refinement will be applied to, mm, to the fluid domain but uh, this uh, part uh, within the fluid will serve as a reference for uh, refinement. And I will set the value here to 0 0.2. Uh, so mm, I can confirm this mm, and I, now I can go to, when something disappears basically, uh, when something disappears from the view you can see that, that it's uh, hidden, I can just press spacebar and this will show. So mm, that's how you can reveal or hide um, s specific parts of your uh, geometry or, or refinements, for example. Uh, now let's go to mm, compound mesh again, uh, and here I will write the mesh case uh, and run the mesher. The mesh is ready, so I can preview it, and there are two ways to do this. I can load the surface mesh, uh, so this will d display the mesh in form of uh, triangular mesh on the surface here. And uh, since the mesh itself is hexahedral, then the it's not the best way. Uh, just to, to, to um, check whether the, the size of the mesh is um, correct. Uh, but another way, a uh, much better one, is to uh, start Paraview um, and then check the mesh, uh, the actual hexahedral mesh, volumetric mesh in Paraview. So you will see once the Paraview starts that I will be able to mm, display the uh, actual mesh mm, and of course uh, apply some tools to for example look inside that mesh. Uh, this is a very uh, advanced tool. Okay, now in Paraview I can uh, ch check the mesh and I can see uh, the refinement here. So uh, if you zoom uh, here, you will see that the refinement was actually applied and the rest of the mesh is uh, coarser. So mm, that's what I was going to, uh, what I wanted to, to obtain here. All right, let's uh, close Paraview for now. Uh, and now I can uh, close this. Uh, I will also hide the mesh refinement. Uh, and now I will define uh, boundary conditions. So uh, here you can use this button to apply uh, boundary conditions. And the first one will be inlet. Uh, so uh, I will select the face from here. And uh, now I will specify uh, the velocity because this one will be defined in terms of uh, velocity. Of course, this will be velocity in x direction. So I will specify mm, this one here. And this will be 80 uh, meters per second. And uh, this will be converted to millimeters per second automatically. So uh, this is the, the value that I'm going to use here. And I can accept this. And now uh, I'm going to define uh, the remaining boundary conditions. So the next one is uh, outlet. And uh, I will apply this one uh, on the other side. So here. And uh, I will s leave the default settings for, for static pressure, so uh, I will leave the zero pressure value here. And uh, I will just add this uh, face and confirm. And now uh, I just need to add uh, some uh, wall boundary conditions and also for symmetry. Uh, so mm, let's uh, define uh, wall boundary condition for now. So uh, I will choose this one. And the type here will be uh, no slip, and this, this uh, default selection here. And uh, I will select it uh, from mm, from the list of uh, available geometries. So I will use this one, and uh, I'm going to apply this wall boundary condition to, uh, to the region uh, defined by this plate, basically. So mm, uh, I can uh, accept this, and uh, now uh, maybe let's hide those uh, boundary conditions. And now I can also define the last boundary condition, uh, which is uh, symmetry. And this one will be constrained, then uh, symmetry, and I can select the, the face, uh, the right, uh, the, the face here. So mm, let's confirm this, mm, and uh, now I have everything uh, selected and defined. 
of course I can also hide this mm, and now uh, basically I have everything prepared for the uh, CFD analysis so mm, I can submit it uh, so let's uh, go to CFD solver uh, and here I can find some additional settings regarding uh, the actual uh, computation uh, here for example I can set the number of parallel cores for uh, parallel comp uh, computation uh, I can set of course parallel to true uh, and there are some additional settings regarding for example steady state analysis and um, write interval uh, number of maximum number of iterations some tolerances and also uh, controls for transient analysis uh, regarding the uh, time so let's um, uh, let's uh, double click this and now i have the right button and uh, before um, pressing run uh, i can click edit and this will take me to uh, the folder with those uh, files generated for open foam and now one more change is that i'm going to um, open this all round file and i'm going to, to go to the end of it and write reconstruct par uh, this one is uh, necessary because um, you will see that once the files uh, are generated by the, by the solver, uh, they are placed in uh, separate folders for each processor. So I will I set eight uh, processors, so I will get eight folders, and within each of them will be some uh, piece of the mesh with the results for each uh, time. And uh, for mm, for prepomex, uh, I need uh, just fo the folders for times uh, for the whole mesh. Uh, not not uh, separated by processor folders, so mm, this reconstruct par uh, after the analysis is completed will just uh, create uh, those additional folders for uh, prepomics. So mm, let's just uh, press run and wait until the analysis completes. I just need to uh, confirm re to remesh and uh, the solver is going to start now. All right, it took a while, but the analysis is finished now, uh, so I can access the results and I can use Paraview again to display the results. Uh, so this will be the first thing to do after uh, getting the uh, simulation done. So mm, let's take a look at the results and here I can plot, for example, pressure. Of course, I could apply some filters and uh, take a closer look at those results, but I'm mainly interested in uh, prepomax analysis, so uh, I will skip uh, some advanced post-processing in uh, Paraview for now. All right, so mm, let's close this uh, and uh, now uh, I'm going to close this window as well and close this too. Uh, and uh, here mm, you can also see that uh, the files were generated and those are the files that I've mentioned when it comes to separate uh, processors. And then thanks to that reconstruct par uh, command, I also have separate folders for uh, each analysis time. This one will be uh, the one with the final results uh, after all those uh, iterations. So. Uh, let's go back to FreeCAD and one more thing to do. Uh, I'll show you how you can mm, prepare the geometry uh, of the mm, beam or plate uh, for use in, in prepomix because um, FreeCAD uses millimeters as length units and I'm going to use meters for uh, prepomix units since the value the results from open form are in meters and basically units using the meters, the SI, uh, b default basic uh, unit system. So mm, I can show you how to prepare the geometry. Basically, mm, I'm going to hide this and uh, copy this uh, one uh, cube and let's display it. Uh, and I can go now to mm, the uh, draft workbench. And from here, I will show you how you can scale the geometry to uh, be prepared for export. All right, so now mm, I can uh, select this part and I will use the uh, scale tool here. And now I need to specify the um, point uh, with respect to which the scaling will be performed. I will select global here and I will specify zero everywhere to use the uh, origin of the coordinate system. Let's press enter and uh, now mm, I need to select the uh, scaling factor. I have a uniform scaling set, so I'm go just going to specify uh, one factor and the rest will be filled automatically. And I also need to select to create a clone and I can press the enter uh, again. Uh, and uh, I will get my uh, geometry scaled. I will just hide this um, uh, this grid because I don't uh, need it now. So uh, let's hide this. Uh, I can check, for example, the coordinates uh, here. Uh, you can see the coordinates of this uh, vertex. And uh, now mm, when I uh, hide this and uh, press the fit all button, I can see the scaled geometry. And uh, here mm, I can see the new coordinates after uh, scaling. The, the size is also uh, correct. I can, of course, measure it, but uh, it's not necessary for now. So I can, of course, uh, then select the uh, geometry and press export, choose a step file and so on. I have, the have this prepared, so mm, let's just go to uh, prepomix. Uh, all right, so mm, here, 
and we'll create a new model and I will select uh, system with, m with meters this time uh, and uh, let's click OK and now I will import the geometry and this will be uh, the geometry prepared before and that's the uh, plate that I'm going to uh, analyze now and of, of course I can uh, also measure it to uh, make sure that uh, all the dimensions after export are correct this is really important uh, you should make sure that mm, all the uh, dimensions uh, are correct and uh, that import and export was done uh, in the right way and I can also for example uh, check the coordinates uh, to make sure that um, placement is correct as well this is also important because the geometry uh, needs to be placed in the same uh, location as in the CFD analysis so that pressure can be mapped correctly uh, and that's also why mm, I check the coordinates here all right, so mm, let's clear it, uh, close this, and uh, now I can of course define the mesh. So mm, let's specify the meshing parameters. And uh, this time I will use uh, uh, this value for uh, maximum element size. And uh, the I will leave the rest with default settings. So I'll just press create mesh. Uh, and um, now the, the mesh should be ready after a few seconds. All right, so the mesh is ready, I will hide this. Mm, and now let's maybe place it like this, uh, like it's placed in uh, CFD analysis. So for example, I can display uh, the, the geometry uh, again to see how it's placed with respect to coordinate system. Uh, so let's go back. Uh, and now uh, I will uh, define the material, but this time instead of creating my own material, I will use the one from material library and I will choose uh, this uh, steel, uh, this type of, of steel material. Of course I can mm, also, uh, well, let's, uh, let's actually add it to uh, model and I can of course also mm, check the uh, properties so mm, here you can see what, what is really important here uh, the elastic properties for this part the rest is mainly for other types of analysis for mm, heat transfer mm, all right so let's create a section and I will assign section to this part with this material mm, and now I just need to create a step this will be static step with default settings uh, and uh, I will define a boundary condition and the first one will be fixed uh, for the bottom of this uh, of this plate uh, so I will uh, fix this face here and I will confirm this uh, and now I just need to add uh, the um, displacement uh, boundary condition to define uh, symmetry here so mm, I will select this face and uh, this uh, degree of freedom and this will be uh, symmetry and now uh, another thing that I need to do is uh, set the mm, pressure load so mm, let's do this now uh, I will use the imported pressure type uh, and uh, now I can mm, select the file uh, from which the mm, pressure will be taken uh, and of course also region so I will select this uh, face right here and then uh, the file to uh, to be used for, for the pressure import and now I need to select this pv.foam file uh, and this will mm, this is just an empty file dummy file uh, used to mm, reference uh, use for, for the results this will take the results from from those folders but uh, using this uh, dummy file so let's accept this and now I can select the time uh, I will select the last uh, iteration uh, variable name will be left with default value mm, and I can also specify the scaling factor this is important because uh, basically uh, open foam uh, outputs pressure in uh, let's say unusual units those are not pascals and those are basically meters squared per, per second squared uh, so we need to apply some scaling factor to just multiply the, the pressure by uh, density and if you take a look um, at the value in fluid properties here you can see that the density uh, in the default unit system is uh, 1.2 so this will be the scaling factor I'll, that I'm going to use here so I will accept this mm, and uh, now uh, I can see the pressure being applied but I can also press preview and this will show me the uh, value of the uh, pressure so of course uh, let's uh, keep in mind that this is symmetric uh, and now mm, I can uh, actually uh, close this uh, so let's close the results and go back to the FE model and there's one more thing that I can do to make sure that everything is correct uh, I can uh, open the results uh, so I can uh, select this uh, file again and this will open the results in, in Prepomex because this is also supported. And I need to j I just need to select the unit system. Let's select this one. Uh, and here I have um, the pressure uh, distribution in, in th and the mesh for, for CFD. And now let's just uh, go to geometry tab. And here I will press copy geometry to results. And here I can uh, see that the geometry is mm, placed uh, properly. So this it's in the right location. It's aligned with the mm, fluid mesh. Mm, so that's uh, how it's supposed to be. And let's uh, close this for now. Mm, and uh, then uh, let's go back to uh, this tab and uh, I can submit the analysis now. So let's uh, run it and wait for the results. 
All right, the results are available now, so let's open them, uh, and I will show you, uh, like, uh, all right, this this uh, deformed shape uh, with some scaling factor. Uh, this one should be fine, all right. So mm, let's just display the deflection, and uh, now I can make a comparison with uh, analytical calculation. Here you can see my analytical calculations based on this very simple mm, formula for drag force. Uh, I had to assume some drag coefficient. Uh, you can find this, for example, in uh, engineering codes for um, civil engineering, especially, uh, but also in some other uh, references. Uh, and then, uh, after calculating everything, uh, I use basic uh, bending equations, and uh, here you can find uh, the value for the deflection uh, that is expected in this case. And let's compare it with what I obtained in mm, in uh, Pre-POMEX. You can see that it's quite close. Of course, there is some discrepancy, and uh, this is actually expected because I showed you before the distribution of the pressure, and you could see that it wasn't uniform. Uh, and uh, for the, the analytical calculations, I assume that distribution is uniform, while in practice it's not uniform. So, um, so that's uh, the source of, of the discrepancy. Uh, of course, I could also refine the mesh. This this could Im improve the the agree agreement in in some cases, but uh, I would not, didn't want to uh, make the, the mesh too refined to so that it wouldn't take. Uh, too long. All right, so mm, that's when it comes to mm, to the deflection, and uh, now let's select. Uh, let's uh, see the mm, stresses. Uh, if I select uh, this component of the stress and compare it with the value that I have here, and so mm, keep in mind that we are using values in uh, meters and pascals. Uh, so if I look at this value right here and uh, compare it with a solution from uh, Prepomex, and actually I can use the query tool uh, to check this uh, right here. And uh, when I query this, you can see and uh, that um, I'm pretty close to um, to what I obtained in this analytical calculation. So, for example, uh, if I check the, of course, let's keep in mind that this is um, also um, affected by the mesh. Uh, but um, I can see um, close to the end of the um, plate, I can see values similar to uh, those that are that were predicted um, by the uh, by the analytical uh, calculation. So mm, the agreement is uh, quite good in this case. Uh, actually, actually mm, it's often uh, better for stresses than for uh, the deflection, but still mm, the agreement is sufficient uh, considering the fact that uh, we are just approximating the uh, pressure field. Uh, we are treating it as, it as uniform and in practice you can see that it's not uh, uniform. So mm, those are just some uh, assumptions. Uh, Alright, mm, that's it for this pre-POMEX tutorial, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.